So tonight for the Fields of Green for All update, which will be combined with Myrtle's rant, I would like to speak a bit about what's happened over the past year that stick in my mind. Because you know that Myrtle's rant is not scripted. So I have to, I'm thinking now, what can I bring up in, in this last show of the year before we take a break and a little bit of a breather and maybe repaint the studio? I'm thinking to myself, what is standing out to me very, very significantly from this year in our, in our crazy weed world? Well, what I heard just this afternoon was that Brittany Griner, the American basketball star, has been released from prison and uh, in, a, in a prisoner swap which is really, really great for her. It's great for her family and her friends. And um, I wonder whether it really was a show of diplomacy. And we all suspect that this is, was all just a political thing to, uh, to start with. But how many prisoners are there just in America alone? I think that the last count federal, federally incarcerated prisoners for cannabis only. And of course, it's all for cannabis trade. Nobody is federally imprisoned for possession of cannabis anymore. No. But of course, the trade thing, just like in South Africa, is a big hoo-ha. And the last I heard was that there was possibly around 300 people still federally, I don't know about in, this, in the various states, imprisoned for cannabis. And, you know, while we've had made strides in South Africa this year, we have been granted leave to appeal in the Labour Court. Uh, we've got, been granted leave to appeal in the Hayes Club case. The trial of the plant two was launched. We had amazing mass gatherings in both Cape Town and Pretoria. Mm -hmm. um, there are still these 10 crisis points like hanging in the air. So I think for over the holiday season, one mustn't forget that there are still cannabis prisoners in South Africa. We have no way of knowing how many. We know of a handful uh, and where they are, but, but, not, but not enough. Mm. And I think that that's what 2022 um, has meant for me, is that there have been these, these um, there's been this progress, but it's almost been like a little step forward and then a little step to the side and then another another weight. So 2022 has been a year of not quite sort of getting there. Mm, it's been an actual <coughs> dance when you put it like that. It has I pictured been a that dance. as you said the words as like a little I mean, waltz yeah. or... Yeah. There's also the people that have been lost through that system, right? They, they locked up in jail exactly. for cannabis crimes. But they, they get so lost through the system that they end up there for decades. You know, yeah. no one actually even knows. Completely Those lost people. in the system. Yeah. And what about in all of the, the, country, the countries out the world, around the world? Yeah. And what can we do about this? And as we know, and as we've always said over and over again, since I gave the first presentation on the subject in Montreal in 2016, um, cannabis is the gateway to this. And for those of you who don't really f uh, follow cannabis and general drug policy affairs at the United Nations, today and tomorrow is CND uh, CND reconvened. It's called yes. Okay. So every year, this uh, CND has their big conference in Vienna in March, um, and then three times through the year between marches, um, they have a reconvened or intercessional section. Uh, which they, where they decide the agenda for next year in March and they clean up all of the loose ends from the year. But do they really? I don't think they really do clean up in the loose ends from the year. So unfortunately, I only had like patchy internet today to be watching the goings on, on C at CND. But remember that there are members of civil society all around the world who are participating in these meetings. And we know that Kenzie... Um, our intrepid Fields of Green for All ambassador from Spain uh, is there in person in Vienna for the reconvened meeting and he made a big stand um, uh, today against what, what was being said. But unfortunately because of load shedding and the internet and everything I didn't quite catch it but we'll save that for some good news in the year. So Looking, looking back on the year, what can we take with us that can teach us something for next year? I think that we're going to have to take a big dose of patience with us. 
and not being in a hurry next year and also looking back is not always a bad thing no it's in not. my book it's not always a bad thing especially when it means learning lessons and i think that the lesson that we haven't quite learned yet is the lesson of the legacy of cannabis now we're going to be dealing with this um in cbd and n a little bit later but i think we need to to look back and remember our our legacy farmers this christmas let's remember our farmers from the amzam Vubu farmer support network people who haven't sold a crop in two years um let's remember the lessons that we need to learn from our mistakes and from everything going so slowly and let's not forget all of the legacy farmers and let's not forget mm. all of those people who have suffered under prohibition both here and and around the world and then looking forward let's really try and have some hope that we can really do something about it and then there's another story in, that's coming up in cbdnm which supports that so 2023 going forward a little sneak peek is going to be the year of the og 2023 is going to be the year of the og here at fields of green for all in the hot box so that's something for you to look forward to Yes. So tonight was really a little bit of a mishmash of a Fields of Green update and a little, it wasn't really a rant because I don't want to leave with the rant. We've got quite a lot to rant about, even on our CBD and ends tonight. But um, here's just wishing everybody a hopeful holiday season when it comes to cannabis and drug policy for sure.